girly. I am a beauty enthusiast that loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup, and today I am so excited to be sharing with you a new release by Danessa Myers. And I have with me both of her new dewy cheek and lip palettes, so I show you all how I use these on the lips and also on the cheeks. I also did an Instagram Reels where I do create this eye look, so you can check that out. And I do and I do use a little bit here too, so I'll insert a clip of that so you can see basically how I create the look and how I use these on the face. But stay tuned for all of that. Of course, I will be doing some swatch comparisons of these cream products with some other ones that I have, so stay tuned at the end of the video for that. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it, and let's get right into this video. Like I said, Danessa Myricks came out with two new products, and I saw these on Sephora, but I don't remember seeing like really any like promos or advertisement for it. I didn't see it on Chin Mood's page, and I was just like, well, I need these, because Danessa Myricks and her products, honey chow they are good. So like I said, these are the new Dewy Cheek and Lip Palette. This is going to be in the shade called Do It Floridy, and this is in the shade called Do It Undercover. These are sold at Sephora, and I didn't see them on Beautylish yet, but my assumption is that they will probably be there, and of course they are available on her website. They do retail for $32, and they are a cream formula, vegan, they both have a radiant finish, they're cruelty free, and they are hydrating. So these are a skin loving ultra luxe cheek and lip cream palette filled with four multi-use shades ideal for all skin tones. So we have in these products, jojoba oil to moisturize the skin, shea butter to smooth the skin, and then vitamin E, which is rich in antioxidants. She describes this formula as being lightweight and having a balm-like texture that will blend seamlessly to create a healthy flush of color for the ultimate fresh face monochromatic look. She says the formula is buildable and it easily melts onto the cheeks and lips to create varying intensities of radiant rich color. So let's get into swatches. And while I'm doing swatches on my arm, I will also insert footage of me swatching them on the cheeks as well. I do not have anything on my face while I'm swatching them on the cheeks because I really wanted you all just to see the color against my cheeks. And I did, if I could say, over apply the products on my cheeks so you could see the as much intensity as these shades can get. So depending on your complexion, you can see if these shades would work for you. I started with the more neutral palette and looking at it closer, I realized that this is actually a blush palette. I initially thought this was like a bronzer contour palette. Um, and I was like, oh, okay, we just have a neutral version and like a pinky corally version. So getting into the first shade, this first shade is called Hush Hush and she describes this as a mocha nude. Hush Hush, this is very, very creamy to the touch. And I was really surprised that this actually showed up on me as like a light kind of peachy tannish shade. I thought it was just gonna blend into the skin um, without me being able to see it. Next shade is called Nude Etude and it's what she describes as a caramelized nude. This shade is called Wallflower and she describes it as a rosewood shade. Lastly is Top Secret, and she describes this as a burgundy brown. So these are all four shades in the more neutral palette. And I feel like depending on your complexion, you probably could use some of these shades as like blush bronzer types. You know how sometimes you can take a blush and add dimension with that. I feel like depending on your complexion, you probably could do that with any of these three shades here. Um, and I should have done that today and I didn't, so forgive me for that. Like I said, depending on your complexion, this neutral palette could be just a neutral toned blush for you, or this could be like a neutral toned blush slash bronzer blush type of palette. Then getting into Do It Flirty, this first shade she calls Coquette, and she describes it as a peachy nude. Sweet Cheeks is Sun Kiss Coral with Gold Reflex. Sorry if I put those kind of right on top of each other. XOXO is going to be a Pinky Rose. 
And then T's is going to be a Dusty Rose. So these are all four of the shades in Do It Flirty. And I think these shades are stunning. I really feel like number one, when I first saw these palettes and then I actually started using them, I was like, if you are a makeup artist, you need these in your kit. Because I feel like between both of these palettes, you can mix and match and really create basically any blush shade that you would ever need for any complexion. I love how she chose the shades and made them so concise in such a travel friendly type of palette so that if you're not a makeup artist you can still really enjoy these shades these blush shades these lip shades and travel with them quite concisely so the formula is so easy to work with you don't need to be a makeup artist to use them to you know make it work but you can definitely enjoy them, travel with them, or if you don't want to travel at all, but you just want something like quick and easy and simple to use and have like two all-in-one palettes. Like She really did it with these palettes and I'm not even shocked because she, in my opinion, is one of the ultimate makeup artists and she is a true artist in every aspect possible. So she knows the shades that are needed to create any type of complimentary blush shade to any type of face look and I think that you can really get that from both of these palettes. So looking at them on my cheeks, I was just like, okay, these are definitely buildable but very pigmented types of shades. I got such great intensity from all of the shades and I know as you were watching them swatched on my face, you probably were like, okay, that's a bit too much. But they do not have to be applied like that. I just applied them like that so you really could see them. And like I said, so that if you are deeper than me, you could see how intense the shades got to determine which palette would work for you, if not both palettes being able to work for you. For the, I think it was when I was doing, the, when I was swatching or face swatching the Do It Undercover shades, I used the Refer 22 brush, which is right here. And I love using flat type kabuki style brushes that are very dense, or their hairs are very dense, um, to apply a blush, cream blush, because I can get a more even distribution of the product on the face. And this is actually the Refer 17 brush, not the Refer 22 brush. Then when I got to the Do It flirty it is the bk beauty 106 brush so that's what i use to apply the do it flirty shades and this was great too this is a synthetic brush and then the refer 17 brush is a natural haired brush and i think both the brushes applied the products very nicely evenly and i had no issue with either application or tool so then i went to put my makeup on and i was very hesitant to actually put these blushes on my skin after I applied my makeup because hint hint tomorrow I'm going to be doing a review or uploading my review of two of these foundations that I'm wearing. I'm wearing the new NARS light reflecting foundation on this side of the face and I'm comparing it to the NARS sheer glow which is on this top which is on this side of the face. And on top of my face, I'm using the new NARS Light Reflecting Powder in the shade called Shore. So stay tuned for that video because that one's gonna be good. And so I had already powdered my face and I'm like, ah, do I put these on my face that's already powdered? Because these are dewy, like dewy, dewy, dewy. As you can see from the footage of the demonstration and then just also looking at them swatched on my arm, like these are not just matte types of shades. But what I did was I went in with a trusty brush. So this is the Sonia G detailing brush. It has um, a blend of natural hairs and synthetic hair. So it's great for cream products and powder products. And so I just lightly tapped my brush into this shade right here and I already have the footage rolling from my Instagram reels of um, how I applied it to the face and just started to tap on my cheeks and I was like, oh, yes. Using a very light tapping motion, I did not disturb the foundations that were underneath it. I also did not disturb the powder that was underneath it. And I think when you look at it, like coming in close, there's no patchiness where I applied the blush and it looks stunning. Because I'm doing a foundation review, I didn't want to add too many blushes all in one, but please know, 
these are just great you can of course use them on unpowdered skin but i'm so happy to know i can use it on top of powdered skin because a lot of times i will powder my skin and then apply blush and i don't always want to apply a cream product and then apply powder around it but not have that area powdered it kind of looks funny especially as the day wears on so i'm so happy that um this cream product did not disturb the powder underneath and the foundation underneath and the radiance that is just glistening from my cheeks i mean look at that look at it it's so pretty these are going to be a little tacky onto the cheeks i've applied this blush now for probably at least i don't know at least 45 minutes ago and still touching them um, the texture is still tacky. So if you wanted to set these with a powder, whether it's a translucent powder or if you wanted to top it with another type of complimentary powder blush, I think you could definitely do that to get more longevity of the blushes. Because they're going to remain more tacky, they might stick to your hair some. Um, and they may not last as long like i can already see that the intensity of the blush has toned down some and kind of blended into my skin so i do think that these would be balms that you would want to set to have more longevity of wear or if you don't mind you know just carrying the palette with you or reapplying just depending on what you're doing during the day um they're not so tacky that it feels like i have vaseline on my cheeks but they're tacky enough to where I'm just like, yeah, you know, if I put a mask on on top, these are going to come off on the mask because they are balmy, you know, and balmies are going to eventually fade because of their texture. So just wanted to include that just so you had an idea as to longevity, stickiness, tackiness, things like that. All in all, I think these palettes are wonderful. Like, absolutely amazing and like i said i think these are just excellent to have either if you're a makeup artist or if you're not a makeup artist and you know you want something kind of concise that you can easily travel with you love cream products or you want you know i don't have a lot of cream product products and i want like some good cream products but i just don't want a lot here you go right here right here i, I just danessa myricks is becoming one of those brands where i'm like she can do no wrong i'm still gonna be honest though but she could do no wrong <laughs> now i do have some other cream products that i want to compare these two because i was like i might have some not necessarily dupes but like i might have some shades that you might have already you know and this will also help you to determine if you need to pick these up so first danessa already has a lip and cheek palette this is what she calls the Feminist Luxe Cream Palette. It retails for $44, and you can get this on Beautylish as well as her website as well. And so there's a few shades in here, at least three shades in here, that I find very similar, especially between the Do It Flirty Palette, which is this one here. I'm swatching this shade here. So let's put that one right here. So this is the shade from the Do It Flirty. And this is from the Lux Cream Palette right there. And sorry, I overlapped the last shade. But as you can see, these two shades, in my opinion, look pretty much identical. Um, yeah, they, they look pretty much identical. And then I'm going to swatch the shade right here. And I'll put it right there so we can compare this shade to this shade right here. And these two shades look similar, very, very similar. I wanted, I think this shade down here from the Lux Cream Palette might have more shimmer um, than this one, but this one also has shimmer as well. So they look, they pretty much look identical. Um, just looking at them, I'll swatch this one here and I'll compare it to this shade right here. And those two shades look identical, which is here and here. So I feel like she got, or inspiration at least, or just pulled the same shades from this palette to help make up her Do It Flirty palette. palette. But I will say, and I mean, it's very obvious that this palette has way more colors and all of them are gonna fall more so in like the pinky, corally, mauve family. And so, um, and there's like some oranges 
here too. So I feel like if you have this palette, then maybe you only just need to get the Do It Undercover if you were interested in both of them because you pretty much have Do It Flirty here. The only shade that you're missing is um, this shade right here called Coquette. But I have some other cream blushes that look very similar to that. And if you have those, then you pretty much already have that palette. Just as an FYI, the formula in the Luxe Cream Palette is the same as the formula in the Dewy Cheek and Lip Palettes, at least from what I can feel and from what I can say. Um, I haven't looked at ingredients yet in the Luxe Cream Palette to determine if the ingredients are the same. Um, but at least in terms of texture, they feel the same. So then I thought about the Patrick Ta um, Cheek Palette. And I wanted to compare this one to obviously the Do It Flirty palette. Looking at Do It Flirty, I don't really see any major shades that look too similar that I feel, you know, like I need to swatch the two because looking at them, I feel like they look distinctively different. XOXO and then Patrick Ta shade. Um, Patrick Ta shade looks a little more cool toned to me compared to the shade here. And then looking at the Dude Undercover, this shade right here looks a little similar to maybe this shade here. I'm comparing it to this shade, which is called Wildflower. And I'll just swatch the cream shade since, you know, cream to cream, I feel is the better way to compare. So let's put this right here. So this is the shade from Patrick Ta. And this is the shade from the Danessa Myricks palette. And looking at them, I mean, they're, you know, probably in the same family slightly, but they are definitely different in terms of how they look. Then I looked at my LYS blushes and I felt like, okay, we have a lot of similar shades. So here's the shade called Confident in LYS. And I'm gonna put Confident right here in the Dude Undercover family of shades. And so as you can see, um, no real similarity in those shades with the shades from LYS. Then LYS and Kindness, and I'll swatch Kindness here. And Kindness and this lighter shade from Danessa's, which is Hush Hush, Hush, Hush they actually do look pretty similar. Um, I feel like the shade Kindness from OIS is pulling a little more uh, peachy, um, whereas Danessa's is pulling, like she said, a peachy nude. Here is LYS in the shade Empower, and I'll put that right here. And Empower, in my opinion, looks like it could almost be a blend between these two shades from Do It Undercover. So yeah, I feel like if you were to mix these two shades here from the Do It Undercover palette, you could get something a little similar to the shade from LYS. Passion from LYS. And I'll put Passion from LYS here. And I'm comparing it to these two shades here from the Do It Flirty palette. And they look a little, look a little similar. Passion is definitely going to be um, pulling more of like a deeper fuchsia shade, whereas Danessa's shades are pulling more of like a bright pink type of shade. And then lastly, Self Love from LYS. This shade here, which is the last shade in the Danessa Myricks palette, which is right there. And they actually look kind of similar. Um, Danessa's is going to be more balmy-like and just slightly lighter, whereas LYS is gonna be a little deeper in its tone. So if you have some of the LYS blushes, especially the ones that I just swatched, you might have, once again, some of the shades in the Do It Flirty version of her palette. However, these are gonna be more, these are gonna be matte, the ones from LYS Beauty, and Danessa's is going to be dewy. So depending on what you're looking for, once again, might determine if you feel like these might fit the need that you have in your collection. Then I have a couple by Tower 28. So this is called Happy Hour. 
Let's put happy hour right here. So there is happy hour. And we've got Danessa's right here and here. And happy hour is going to be definitely a little warmer in its shade, whereas Danessa's is going to be more cool toned. Then I have golden hour by Tower 28. Let's just put this one here. And there is Danessa's up here. And the Tower 28 actually looks very similar in color to Danessa's, except the one in Tower 28 doesn't have that shimmer to it, whereas hers does. But both of them have a very balmy texture, and the blushes by Tower 28, the cream blushes, are very dewy on the cheeks. They have a very similar effect. Okay, not done yet. I have one from Melt Cosmetics, also in the shade called Golden Hour. This one, let's put this one um, right here. Hopefully you all can see that. And that shade by Golden Hour, um, or I should say by Melt, is a lot lighter. And I feel like more beigey than the shade in the Do It Flirty, which is right here. Then I've got the blush from Rare Beauty. This is called Nearly Rose. I'll do some re-swatching of the Do It Flirty palette. So we've got Danessa's Do It Flirty, and then we have Rare Beauty Nearly Rose right there. And the um, Rare Beauty shade Nearly Rose is going to be, first of all, matte. And I feel like it's going to pull a little more warm in its tone versus Danessa's is cooler. And then we have Nearly Apricot by Rare Beauty, comparing it to Hush Hush from Danessa. So Danessa Hush Hush, and then Nearly Apricot from Rare Beauty. And Nearly Apricot is definitely deeper in its tone than Hush Hush. Lastly, Patrick Ta's Duos. So this is She's So LA, and I'm, once again, just swatching the cream, comparing it to Nude Etude in the Do It Undercover. Do It Undercover, Nude Etude, and then I have Patrick Ta's She's So LA. And those two are kind of similar, let me, build up the intensity of the swatches. So here is She's So LA, and then this is Nuditude from Danessa, and they actually look very, very similar. Maybe She's So LA is just a little deeper, um, and maybe has a little bit more of like a reddish hue than Nuditude, but very similar, very, very similar. And then lastly, I have Do We Know Her? by Patrick Ta. So swatching the cream shade here with Sweet Cheeks. Here is Danessa and then Patrick Ta. And those two shades definitely look different. Um, Patrick Ta shade is pulling definitely more coral um, and brighter, if I could say. And Danessa's has more of like that goldish, golden shift to it. Um, even though it's a coral tone, you see more of that golden shift than we're getting from Patrick Ta's. And then Patrick Ta is gonna be matte versus uh, shimmery. So those are all of the cream blush shades that I felt were similar to, the, to these that were worth swatching. And to me, based on what I have, at home, I still feel like there's a place for me to have this particular one because of the compactness of this palette. And instead of me traveling with multiple individual blushes, I can basically get the tones that I have in all of these other blushes in this palette. And then in terms of the Do It Undercover palette, I really don't have 
much like this at all. Most of the swatches that I was comparing to were from the Do It Flirty palette. So Do It Undercover is definitely more unique to my collection and it's something that I don't have. And so I'm very excited to have this one. And I do feel like in terms of who these palettes are best suited for, I really feel like both of these could work for a really great range of complexions. Because even if you have um, lighter complexions, these are buildable, so you're not going to dip your palette or dip your brush in the palette and immediately just get like so much intensity on the cheeks. You can, what I would suggest too, especially if you're going in with like one of these deeper shades, I would say dip your brush in the shade that you want and then tap it on the back of your hand. And then that way you have less product on the brush, but you're also blending out the product on the brush, so you're getting an even distribution of the shade on the brush, and then start lightly tapping the product onto the cheeks. And then remember, if you hold your fingers at the end of the brush, you're applying less pressure when applying the product on the face versus holding your fingers closer to the bristles. This is gonna give you more intensity because you're applying more pressure. So go in with you know a deeper shade, tap, tap, tap on the back of your hand, hold the brush at the end and lightly apply. And I think you still could really enjoy these shades and get some really good use out of them. And then of course, if you have a deeper complexion and if you're looking for some really beautiful cream nudes, I would highly explore these because I mean, like I said, you can mix and match these. And even if, for instance, Hush Hush is going to be too light for you to wear it alone, try mixing it with one of these deeper shades to get a more neutral type of blush shade or just go in with one of these shades alone. And I, I just really think there's so much flexibility in this palette. And like her Lightworks Volume 3 palette, at least for me, it's challenging the artist inside of me and making me go like, okay, I can definitely mix and match and not just use one shade by itself. And then with the Do It Flirty palette, I love how she incorporated some warmer tones and some cooler tones in this palette. So once again, mixing and matching to create the shades that are best for you and your complexion. And I think she chose really great shades because looking at this palette, maybe this shade might be a little too much out of your comfort zone, but if you mix it with this shade, you're toning it down and you can still enjoy maybe the undertone of the shade, but then you're not just, you know, being turned off because this shade might be too much for you on your skin by itself. And I think this particular palette will also work well for deeper shades as well because we've got some deeper tones in here, um, which is this shade here that will really pop on the cheeks. These two shades might work as highlighters on your skin depending on your complexion and you'll get that beautiful, radiant, glowy, dewy look on the cheeks. So I just really am so happy with these and I really feel like you can't go wrong with these. Um, another creator here, her name is Sophia. I saw her video go up on these palettes and she has a lighter complexion than I do. So I will link her video down below. Um, you're someone of a lighter complexion. She did purchase both of these and you can see how they look on her skin and her recommendations as to, you know, which one works for her or if both of them work for her. Um, but I just, they're a hit for me. I highly recommend them. So let me know your thoughts down below what you think of these new two products. Are you interested in them? Do they look like products that you would be able to use or would want to use? Leave that all down in the comment section below. And if you've made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.